Let's hope the kitties don't. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of fun when the animals interrupt. <laughs> We're just giving people a minute or two to join the broadcast and then we will get started. I'm going to get it pulled up on my laptop so I can answer questions. Well, so we can see what the questions are, first right, of all. Right. <laughs> and while you're waiting for other people to join so that we can get started, we would really appreciate if you would go ahead and click share and share this Facebook Live with your fellow nail friends. There it is. And look at that, I did manage to get us both on the screen. <laughs> and all my distractions. Right. Hi, Rosa. <laughs> Holly Skippers is watching. Oh, funny. <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> Again, we are just waiting to give people the opportunity to get logged in before we start so they don't miss anything. So if you would go ahead and click share and let's get as many people going as we can so that it enhances our question opportunity. Question opportunity, I like that. We want to interact with you guys. It's so much more fun that way when they talk to us. We can totally carry on talking about to ourselves, this amongst ourselves. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, it helps if you click on share on your timeline. I can't find my name. I can't find my name. <laughs> is it Nydia or Nydia from Puerto Rico? Hi. Hi Amanda, hi Sarah. <laughs> There's Sarah. Oh, nice. It looks like you could be related to someone in the chat. Did you see All that? All right, yes. Awesome, hi, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Gal in the short hair, this is Mel, Melissa, <laughs> BFF Mel. Right. Take your pick. <laughs> I answer to a lot. All right. It's like we've got a good start. We're getting start, yes. Yeah. So, are you ready to start figuring out who we are and then delve into some history and be chat my, about some future? Be my guest. <laughs> Hello, if you haven't joined us before, I'm the Fingernail Fixer. My name is Holly, and I am a blogger and contributing editor for Nails Magazine, which is why you can find us here on the Nails Magazine Facebook channel. With me today is hashtag BFF Mel, if you've seen her on my posts before. Her actual name is Melissa Finch, and she is an active salon professional, as well as active on social media as Mel's Tips of the Trade. So be sure to look us both up if you don't already follow us individually, and make sure that you click share down below and share this video. And the occasional guest blogger for you. Yes, you write the follow-up blogs for I these just, Facebook videos. I try to, yes. <laughs> And occasionally something random. And Sarah that popped up in our chat has actually been a contributor for me lately on a story that's upcoming about some tips and tricks for if you're a gel user, how to make it a little easier to use liquid and powder, or if you're a liquid and powder slash acrylic user, how to use gel. And Sarah was one of how my How to do a crossover? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Because yeah. you wouldn't believe how many competitors at Nolympia in Houston were like, oh, I wanted to compete in everything, but I normally don't do this service. And it's yes. like, that sounds like a good story idea. Yes. Give them some tricks for crossing over. I know my talents tend to lean more towards more proficient with liquid and powder. And mine are more in the <laughs> gel arena. <laughs> and yes. this is where that whole yin and yang bestie thing yes. comes in. Because you can be like, oh, your liquid and powder needs tweaked like this. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Hi, everyone. That's joined. <laughs> We're so excited to have you with us. And we're going to travel down a history of nails. And we would love to have any additional input that you have. If you want to just place them in the comments below. And we would also love any questions that you have. 
So stick those in below as well, and I will keep an eye on those as well as Mel keeping an eye on them. And between the two of us, we should be able to spot all of your comments. I hope so. <laughs> all right, so I thought this would be an interesting topic for today. We didn't get any input last put last Facebook Live to any requests, so I thought, okay, the history of nails. We all, I would say everybody knows some history of the nails, and all of this information is out there somewhere in social media land. Um, a lot of the information I found was Nails Magazine's archives. Yay, mm -hmm. Nails Magazine, thank you. But I thought it would be interesting to put it kind of all into one timeline because of all the information I found, I found it on lots of different sites or lots of different pages. I was telling Holly this morning I probably have 20 tabs open on my iPad just to kind of keep them all in line. <laughs> and I have several pages of notes, so please hang with me so I could get um, dates and info straight. And if you want to check out the information that's available on and from Nails Magazine, just go to nailsmag.com. Yes, and they have a great spot that's the encyclopedia. I love the encyclopedia. <laughs> if you want to look up a product or the history of a company or whatever, that was a, that was a fabulous resource. Well, even diseases and disorders are on there. Yes. It's an amazing resource. Like anything nails, you could just type it into the little search on the Nails Magazine Encyclopedia. Yes. It's insane. They're, they're a fabulous resource. All right, so we're going to start about 3,000 years ago. If you know, there seems to be a theme here on me in ancient history. <laughs> the history of shoes, the history of reflexology, and I don't know, if, if you could see my book collection over here off to the side, quite a few are on ancient history of ancient cultures. Right. You know, can and you... if you want to delve into nail art history, leave a comment down below to vote for that as one of the future topics of our Facebook Live. Yes, because we won't be talking about that much. We figured don't even get us started on nail art, because that'd be a whole nother whole nother broadcast in itself. All right, so about 3,000 years ago, the most consistent information I found was about ancient Egypt, ancient China, and ancient Rome. Um, also some in India. The, some of the things they would use as dyes for the nails are henna, berry stains, oils that were tinted red, um, in Rome, they use sheep's blood mixed with sheep's fat, so yeah. I don't know if that's where we get the, the term blood red, but still, still all these years later, still popular color. Definitely um, the next time I'm polishing someone blood red, I'm going to envision that. Like, yes, sheep's blood. <laughs> hmm. Kind of like that movie where they go and swish it over the door jams. I'll be oh. thinking like swishing it onto the nail. Like, bleh. <laughs> Okay, interesting way to bring in the Ten Commandments movie into, all right. I couldn't remember the movie, just the <laughs> swishing of the blood. <laughs> all right, some historians believe that nail polish was invented in China. Uh, it was a mix of gum arabic, gelatin, beeswax, sometimes rose orchids, sometimes uh, rose petals, and orchid petals. Um, in, I don't know what year this was found, but in a tomb excavated in Babylonia, which is now Iraq, they found a tomb dated to 3200 3, BC. They found engraved solid gold manicure kit. Wow. So our tools have been around for at least that long. In with the kit was a um, product they called coal, and it was K-O-H-L, coal. And there was some tinted black and some tinted green. And they believed black was used for royalty and green was a commoner color. Can you imagine if TSA decided to steal your tools and they were solid gold? <laughs> I'd be like, oh my, oh my gosh, you'd be, right? you'd be having heart palpitations. I don't think I would travel with them. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're getting some ask requests for uh, nail art, too. Ah, See that? brilliant. Um, yes, there's a ton of info, but not all true. Yes, I did find out that I, I tried to be very picky and choosy about what I found. Because if I would have talked about everything I found, we'd be here all day. <laughs> and Holly's like, limit this to an hour. Right, I'm like, cut off. Yes. Um, they said in 600 BC China, uh, gold and silver powders, actual gold and silver powders, were used to, to decorate the nails. Um, if you noticed in our teaser pics, that was the Emperor Dow Empress Dowager Sixty or CZ, it's spelled C-I-Z-I, -I, and those, those finger um, coverings she had were meant to protect the nails, those long gold. Right, those were like serious, and they almost looked modern. 
Right. That's what's so crazy is you look at some of the artistry coming out now and it's like, wow, maybe our trends do come back around. It, even it really is some of the time. Some of the stuff we think is modern is not all that modern. I mean, red has been a consistently popular color for nails for centuries. Right. Um, it was ways that the aristocracy uh, and the, how you decided the hierarchy. In some cultures, the the deeper red your color on your nails was, the more power you represented. Oh wow! So only royalty had again blood red. <laughs> Nice. And and deep red, um, and it sounds like chrome. How much more authentic of a chrome do you get than real glitter, gold real powder, silver, and, and real gold, gold gold powder? Yeah. Um, um, they found evidence in ancient Egypt that they had made extensions with ivory and gold. So again, nail extensions, nothing new. Uh, what I've discovered, or what I kind of of an overall arc here of with nail care and nail trends and nail art is. Within the last 120, 150 years, it's where it's become much more accessible to the average consumer, regardless of, of income. You know, And that's really awesome. One of my favorite quotes that Jan Arnold will always throw out is, it doesn't matter if you're a size 2 or a size 20, you can still have amazing nails. Exactly. And I love the versatility of that. Exactly. I was just explaining to a client last week how um, so many of the nail companies like CND go to Fashion Week. And Fashion Week in the spring is to forecast what's going on in the fall. But due to social media, we can take what you see in Fashion Week today and put on your nails tomorrow. So thus we get fashion forward. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, uh, Cle- uh, historians also believe that Cleopatra wore red nails. They think Nefertiti, who are, these are Egyptian queens, wore violet. Um, oh, that's your color. Uh, right? Royalty. And there's the blue for me. Um coming later blue blood Um, oh there you go okay Uh, also I found in several different um, ancient cultures military commanders especially noted in Egypt and Rome would paint their nails and their lips the same color before they would go into battle or they would dip the tips of their fingers of the several sources that I found I could not find a specific color but if I had to go with the color I'd say red or black Mm -hmm. to go into to go into See, battle. guys, nails are not just for girls. It's very manly to have your nails polished. It is. Uh, one of the ads that we used in the, in the teaser was from a company, I think that was from a 1909 ad. And if you notice, it is a guy getting his nails manicured. <sighs> a guy with polished nails. <laughs> <sighs> That's so my thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another interesting thing I, I found was in up in Greece, the upper class would use pistachio shells to affix oh, to funny. their nails to give themselves extension. When you talk about a high C curve, you get a no pistachio kidding. nail on there, you get a good right? C curve going. It's a snack and an accessory. <laughs> <laughs> True, you're just you're just good for the rest of the day. Exactly. Okay. So all of that's about, you know, three thousand BC up to the Emperor Daois Dowager from China. She was like eighteen sixty one to nineteen oh eight. That's why we had a good picture of her. <laughs> So to get into the 1800s, like I say, I'm going to double check, make sure we're not missing any questions here. Nope, we're good. Looks like Keep we're good. Okay, out. okay, okay. Lots of votes for nail art history, though. All right. Hey, I'm good with, I love doing research. It's it's like my thing. I have several pages of notes here, and my husband was kind of teasing me last night when I was kind of charting it all out in the timeline. He's like, doing homework? I'm like, yep. <laughs> He's like, okay. I spent several hours researching all of this stuff, which just appeals to my analytical brain, too. Nail geeks rule. Um, In the 1800s, almond shapes were popular. Uh, They buffed them with a red scented oil, so that scented, those oils were around for thousands of years. Um, I found this was interesting. 1830, a European foot doctor named Dr. Sitz, and let's get this specific, it was S as in Sam, I, T as in Tom, T as in Tom, S as in Sam, Dr. Sitz adapted the dental tools for nails, thus originating the first orangewood sticks. Really? 1830. Wow. Who knew? In 1892, Dr. Sitz's niece brought his methods of manicuring to the U.S., catering to women of different incomes. Oh, cool. I'm thinking if orangewood sticks have been around since the 1800s, why are we still using our nails as tools? 
Uh, <laughs> also, in, in the late 1800s, gals were using, um, and men, girls and guys, I should say people, let's be gender neutral here, using metal files and scissors, that's when they started to become popular, and in 1896 is when, I about the closest date I could get to the first nail salons, where you would actually go to a salon and have your nails done. So again, wow. and did it differentiate if you were getting your nails done at a hair salon or if it was a uh, nails only? The what I read indicated really more nails only. That's um, awesome. And apparently, it was also kind of popular to have a nail professional come to your home and do it too, if you could. I suppose if you could afford to mm -hmm. have it done that way. So you mobile manicurists, that's been around for a long time too. All right. Anything to add so far? I don't know. Okay. I think I'm still like woo, fascinated. My geek is like, hee -hee. well, there's, there's multiple pages of notes and I don't want to go too fast for anybody. Take a breath. All right. Show okay. of hands. Okay. Give us a thumbs up. If you're <laughs> liking the history so far, if your inner geek is like, yes, we want to see some thumbs up floating across the screen. Yes, yes, Let's please. go. <laughs> I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any thumbs up. Do okay. they know how to click it? Here, right. I'll click it and make sure it works. Right here. Click yours. There, there we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's a lot, but it's so fascinating. And I, I hope I'm not going too fast, but we just didn't want to make this go on, like, all day. Right. We wanted to try and keep the Facebook Live within our <coughs> usual 45 minutes to an hour-ish that we generally offer. Okay, and I'm going to add a side note here. I'm starting to sound a little hoarse. I'm starting to feel a little hoarse. I don't know if you guys recall, but like the first um, guest blog that I wrote for Holly, or for Holly for Nails Magazine, back in December was about what it was like to work with no voice. Last summer, I actually lost my voice for six weeks. Um, vocal cord injury, they called it. Um, most of the time I do fine, but I can tell when I talk a lot, it's kind of starting to get a little hoarse. So I may pass this over to her and she may have to just read from my notes but and have you interject interject <laughs> okay so we moved up to the 1900s um another one of the teaser picks that you had there was from 1917 it was called graphs high glow nail polish paste also in 1909 it was the lusterite nail enamel which was these most of these original products were more like cakes mm -hmm. that you put on and that lusterite is the ad that had um, the guy in it. It kind of makes me think of waxing a car. Like when they're talking about the little cakes and the paste, it makes me think of like a pasty wax that you're rubbing on the car and then buffing true, off. True, true. Very, very, yes, very, very similar. Um, but wait, wait, good thing you brought up the car thing. <laughs> See, you're, you're, you're about five lines ahead of me here. In 1911 is when the first cuticle remover Wow. Came out. And I, where did I find that note? Oh, in 1917, in November of 1917, Vogue magazine, which who knew Vogue would have been around that long either, Vogue actually wrote an article called Don't Cut the Cuticle. So now that cuticle removers were available, they've been telling you don't cut the cuticle. So for 101 years now, we're telling you, don't cut the cuticle. You would think, how many <laughs> hundred years does it take to catch on? Maybe we need another decade. Maybe we should share this video with clients on our salon pages so that they would hear some of this history and understand we've been telling you for a while now. And let's, let's clarify, um, I feel the need to clarify, of we don't cut what most p people consider, the average public considers cuticle. We don't cut the eponychium, which is the edge of the living tissue. Right. True cuticles on the nail plate. We've gone over that a hundred times over, but just so it's been around for a hundred years. Don't cut the cuticle. <laughs> that could potentially be a good future subject is basic nail anatomy and really picked apart with maybe some of Doug Shun's high res fancy images, because I know oh, yeah. proximal nail fold and eponychium and cuticle often all get confused. So if you'd like to see maybe a future episode on anatomy from hands to feet and nails, 
pop that into the comments so we know that's something you would be interested in potentially. Yes, please. All right. In 19, also in 1917, Simplex, a company called Simplex had a Manny outfit. They didn't really call it a kit. It was a Manny outfit. It included an orange wood stick, an emery board, cuticle remover, a whitener, three or four other things. I wasn't exactly sure what their description was. <laughs> um, a buffer of some sort, and it cost 14 cents to have your home Manny kit. That's awesome. Can For you imagine? 14, 14 cents. cents. Of course, a manicure in the salon was probably three to five dollars. So if that, right? Well, that's when cokes were what a nickel. This is true. You'd have to go without three cokes to be able to buy your mani kit. But you know, like we make sacrifices for what's important. So true. <laughs> so true. You have to have priorities. That's right. All right. Up to a very important date that is this should be important to all of us in the nails nail world is 1932. What happened in 1932? Can you give me a guess? Um, is 1932, is that... I'm not letting her see like, the notes either. Is that consumer polish? Like a wearable polish that you can do at home? Or am I off a decade? She makes me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Charles... She's the one that's good at numbers. <laughs> Charles Rev Revson, Joseph Revson, and Charles Lackman, they employed a chemist. You may not know those names yet, but give me a second. They employed a chemist named Carlton Ellis, who patented the first pigment-based nail polish that was non-streaking. It was inspired by automobile paint. Nice. It's amazing how many things with nails were inspired by automobile, because you have, like, your chromes and your minks, and a lot of that has crossed over. Exactly. So, let's give this a second and see if anybody can tell us what company came from Charles Revson. Joseph Revson and Charles Lackman. Yes. First person in the comments who can tell us what company they started. We're gonna have to wait just a second. Yeah. I feel like you should play the, the Jeopardy thing. Here you go. Do 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 okay, anybody tuning in right now is like, what <laughs> are they doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone, are you? No guesses? Aha! Rochelle! Good job! Yours is ahead of me a little. Yes, Rochelle! Woo! Revlon! It is Revlon. Great job. Revlon released and patented the first nail polish that's close to the polish that we know in 1932. Okay. <laughs> We're so easily amused. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for nail geeks. You're yes, right. Again. All right. In 1934, Maxwell Lappy, who was a dentist, is credited with creating the first set of fake nails. Now, I took that interpret, I interpreted that as like your set of press-ons that you could actually use. Mm -hmm. um, how many of you are, are aware that, and I imagine a lot of you are, so this isn't trying to say you don't know, but how many of you are aware that our modern day uh, acrylics and gels that we use today and a lot of our tools today have a history in the dental industry. Show us the thumbs up if you already knew that. I bet there are quite a few that know that because a lot of nail companies got their start from dental. Very many of the of the major companies got their start in dental. I knew, there we go and get there some thumbs up. Yay, yeah. good job. A lot of people knew that. So I knew that some of the big name companies that are around now, yes, like OPI, and I'm going to get to the companies here in a couple minutes, I knew they had their origins in the dental industry, and I will get to those, but I didn't know, there was a gap in information for me, and I hate gaps in information. <laughs> you know, if I, if I don't know something, I'm Googling that stuff right away. They cut the friends and family and clients call me the walking encyclopedia. You want me on your trivia team. Absolutely. <laughs> but when in my research, I found that a dentist named Frederick Slack in 1957, and pardon the cough drop here, in 1957, he cut his own nail, and he must have cut it bad enough that it needed some coverage. So he started playing around with the dental acrylics that he had at his disposal to make, you know, dentures and false teeth out of, and he used a piece of aluminum foil, the first... Nail form. Form, yes, I'm going to lose my mind there for a minute. The first form, he used aluminum foil and dental acrylic to fix his own nail. 
And that makes sense because older foil was much stiffer than True. our modern day foil. True. So he got together with his brother and created a company. His brother was Tom. They created a company called Patty Nails. And that's P A T T I Nails. That from, again, from my research, and I have this incorrect, I apologize for my research, it looks like that Patty Nails eventually become NSI Nails. Nice. Um, Nail Systems International. Wow. I did not realize that. Yeah, so I don't know. I couldn't find the exact date when we get we go from Patty Nails to NSI, but NSI's been around a really long time. Yeah, if anyone knows that, please leave it in the comments. We would love to know more information about when it became NSI. Yes, again, I don't like gaps in information. <laughs> so to continue down our timeline a little bit, in the 1960s, it was popular to use like cigarette rolling papers or even tea bags and airplane glue to reinforce your nails. So kind of like the forefather of the modern wrap that we have mm -hmm. or the fiberglass wraps. Um, and this one I thought was kind of gross, but seemed to be corroborated by history or by information that people would use real human nails that had been cut off of people. <laughs> And glued them to their own nails for their extensions Ooh, dear. And, and affixing them with the airplane glue and the paper. I'm sorry. I can't handle someone blowing on my nails. So the <laughs> idea of someone's nail that's been cut off being on my nail is like squidging me out. <laughs> yeah, see, Denise says she still used tea bags today. That's been around since the Brilliant. 60s. Yes. Hey, whatever works for you. No kidding. Do you use, Denise, do you use the tea bags as a... Um, for yourself, or do you use them as a patch when you're fixing nails that maybe you're then going to put a gel polish over? I'm just curious because I use um, fiberglass pieces when yeah, I'm doing nail. I do that as well patches. for natural nail repairs. Yes. So early dental acrylic that was used started to be adapted for nails um, was a too coarse and too dense, and it took long. It took too long to file. So that's kind of how we get things got progressed into. Um, other companies. I would be curious to know if that is why the e-file came about because they needed something like a Dremel to file down that harder to... I'm sure I didn't do much research on actual tools. Right. But that would make sense but a lot of our you know a lot of our tools like specifically the curette really truly did come from um, nails um, on nails. Dental. Dental. <laughs> See, nails on the brain. And Denise says she uses it to patch repair natural nails. Nice. Oh, nice. Amazing for photos. Dries clear. That's really cool. And Denise, are you in the U.S. or the U.K.? Because I know tea bags are really huge in the U.K. still. Yeah, I don't, have, I don't even drink tea. I'd have to get my hands on some, <laughs> some tea bags to, to be able to do that. You can actually buy empty tea bags. Um, at like tea specialty stores because you buy the tea in bulk. It's not pre-bagged. Oh, there and you so go. So then you can bag your own. She's in get... LA. Oh, nice. Just, Brilliant. We were just there a few we weeks ago. We were just there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What would be one thing about nails that are popular that I haven't mentioned yet? Hmm. If it's not designs, because we're not talking about nail art. It, it um, would classify as a design. You should be coming up on the moon manicure somewhere along here. Yes, that was in there. I kind of skipped that when I thought. I get that right. in the, when I surmise the timeline. All right. Mm. What else is really, really popular? Back then or now? Both. Shapes. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to stop making her work for it. Yes, I help me. <laughs> I haven't talked about the French manicure yet. Oh, true. There you go. I was close with the moon. Yes. Yes, I'm going to say, we're, we're getting there. So, the term French manicure was actually a term coined by Jeff Pink. Hi, Sig. <laughs> Jeff Pink of the Orly Company. Now, there seems to be some discussion and some not necessarily everybody agreeing on the true history of the French manicure. Some say it's, it was kind of invented in the 70s. Others say it goes clear back to the 30s. And I've had some other information that it could go back even farther than that. One of the stories associated with it is a makeup artist by the name of Max Factor. He, rig he was uh, originally born in Poland. He went to Hollywood and started working for films. And the film studios discovered, this was one of the information I found, the film studios discovered that they needed a, 
something instead of colors for the actress's nails so they didn't have to change polish colors every time they wanted to change wardrobe. So the, the French was a way to have them look natural on camera. You know how we over-dramatize the makeup mm -hmm. if you're going to be on stage or on camera. It was a good way for filming. Um, another one said that it was inspired by runways in Paris. Um, there's, there's multiple stories, but the true name of French manicure was coined in 1976. And it got majorly popularized by Barbara Streisand. Really? All these interesting names in our in our history of nails. And does it say if she did polish or if it was an enhancement? It was her natural nails. Apparently they were very long. Uh, if you, you can Google her, Google image, and you find lots of pictures of her standing around with really long nails, and she would brag that they were hers. They were not extensions. But she wore them on Johnny Carson, and it was her long, painted, polished nails of her own. Good catch. <laughs> I correct everybody. I figure I better correct myself. You probably should. I think they should all tap on the laughing face that you actually are did human. I, did I messed up? Yeah. BFF Mel is human. <laughs> Who knew? But once Barbara Streisand talked about it on Johnny Carson, the request for the, the that look skyrocketed. And it's still a classic today. And yes, it was. It never goes away. It was very popular in the 20s and 30s, and it made a resurgence in the 70s and 80s, and has never really gone away since. It's pretty much a staple look. It is. Kind of like red polish. Yes, so you're, the one I hear about French all the time is, it's clean, it goes with everything, you know. Should we discuss our, our conflicting opinions? <laughs> we should save that. Okay. <laughs> we have conflicting opinions on French, and we can get to that on a on another day when we actually have like a debate over it. Yes. We need podiums. Yes. <laughs> we mentioned that last and, time. And maybe funny hair. It's not no? funny. Okay. Yeah. We should make it really weird. So now we're up to 1979. This is where I'm going to have the my BFF takeover. <laughs> and... 1979 is when the company of creative nail design, known today as C&D, came about. And I'm going to have Holly give you a little bit of the history on that one. Awesome. So with C&D, you have Dr. Nordstrom that was working on a patient. He was a dentist. And he had his patient mention that what he was using to fix or create her teeth smelled like what was used on her nails and being a chemist in addition to being a dentist he was quite fascinated with the idea of that and so Dr. Nordstrom actually developed a product for use that was designed to be used on the nails and that is the beginning of creative nail design and one of his children Jan Arnold is actually still with the company she is one of the co-founders and another one of his children is also still in the industry Jim Nordstrom who created famous names so definitely a couple of amazing companies came out of Dr. Nordstrom's ideas and chemistry background and family. Right, so excellent. So we, from creative nail design to C&D to OPI. I know we mentioned, somebody mentioned this earlier. OPI was started in 1981 by George Schaefer and he was out of Hollywood. He had a dental lab and it was called, okay, get this, Ordontium Products Inc. That is a mouthful. That is a mouthful. I had to actually write it down so I can remember how to pronounce it. I had an OPI educator that I spoke to a couple of weeks ago actually tell me the proper verbiage of that. Ordontium Products Inc. You can also find it out there um, again on Nails Magazine's website um, for information. Um, his wife was getting her nails done and he had a similar experience to Dr. Nordstrom. Got hooked up with a chemist friend and they created their first line of a liquid and powder product. Also, any of you big followers of OPI, you know in every one of their collections they have one with Susie in the name. Because we know OPI is fabulous. They're fabulous names. Um, what's your, do you have a favorite OPI name? Um, no. No? I'm kind of a C&D geek. <laughs> I can I'm, tell you my favorite C and D polish from the eighties. <laughs> I don't even remember what it's called now. It was blue. Oh. Yours. Oh, it's Metro. Yes. Yeah. Dark blue. 
Yeah. Uh, my favorite name from the OPI colors was Kinky and Helsinki. That's funny. I always thought that one was funny. That is really funny. Um, but in every collection, there is one with the name of Susie in it. And Susie is actually George Schaefer's sister-in-law. Nice. And and involved is still involved in the company today. They both are, aren't they? Schaefer and... Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Okay. I have a question for you. Question for her. Good thing you guys don't have to sit in here and look at me. And but Yes. You can leave. Yes. Oh, there we go. I'm not Willie or Waitress is one of their most popular color layers. I think that's probably... I would say one of their most well known for many many years. I'm not really a waitress. Was the number one color mm -hmm. nail polish color in the country for years. Yeah, I think that was the standard for a really long time. Okay, now I'm going to deviate just a little. What does Alfred Hitchcock have to do with nails? Um, now this is a jump, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, let's see. He's creepy, but nails aren't creepy. No. Um, he's a geek. And we're geeks? Okay, okay. Um, what Alfred Hitchcock has to do with nails, not really, really him directly, but he made a movie called The Birds. Oh. Okay, in The Birds. I told you, creepy, right? Oh, yeah. It's Master of Suspense. Master <laughs> of Suspense. In The Birds, his starring actress, her name was Tippi Hedren. Ah, uh, uh, now the dots are connected. Yes. <laughs> so, for those of you that aren't familiar, Tippi Hedren, she was an actress, and by the way, she is the mother of the actress Melanie Griffith, who is the makes her the grandmother of the actress Dakota Johnson. That is crazy. So there's a, this little legacy there. It's such a small world. It is a small world. In the 1970s, she visited a place called the Hope Village, which was a Vietnamese refugee camp outside of Sacramento, California. Uh, they had all of these refugees that had come over when we would had the Vietnam, the Vietnam War, and she was trying. She noticed there was these women there. She wanted to be able to help them, and she was trying to think of a, a vocation or a job they could do to help them get established in the United States because many of these refugees came over here with nothing just the clothes on their back. Sometimes they'd lost everything. Sometimes they'd, some of them had lost family. They were here with nothing, so she wanted to help them out. And while she was visiting this refugee camp, she noticed they were all just ooing and aahing over her nails. And she thought, hmm, what can we do to help these young ladies? She brought in her own um, manicurist, her own nail professional, and did a class. There was an original class of 20 uh, Vietnamese refugees that started in as the nail professional industry and today the the vietnamese nail professionals are more than i think it's more They're than actually 81 percent of the industry is it last i've read was 51 percent, but it's 81 is the most recent number that i've heard okay it is it's a lot of them so we can count that all back to tippy hedron and wanting to give these refugees an opportunity in the living um in the united states and if any of you from Vietnam or uh, the Vietnamese side of the industry are tuned in and anyone else that is interested in getting some extra science today on the Nail Tips show later this afternoon, if you want to look that up on Facebook, she is having Doug Shun in as a guest today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Love Doug. Oh. Hi, everybody. It's saying hi. Hi. <laughs> There's and a list. And Bonnie says that she believes Mr. Schaefer's not involved anymore. So thank you for that heads up. And Marion knew it was Tippy Hedren. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Marion. Hi, Marion. <laughs> are you in the UK or are you somewhere else in the world? Marion travels like crazy. Does she? Okay. Yeah. So colors and shapes. Here, you can read that one. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> Yay! Because <laughs> I can totally read. All right. Yes, Holly can read. So 1900, what would you guess as the color and shape. I'm gonna give them a second to guess. I think it'll be really fun to make them work for it. We've given them so much other information. Right? That's all right. Like, let's have some guesses. What what was big in the 1900s? Long or short? Doesn't and what count. color do you think it was? Oh wow, Marion was just at the Estonia and Olympia. Denise says red and oval. Ooh, good guess. Rosa says red. Karen says long. Nice. 
got some great guesses. Yes. And thank so, you for guessing and participating and playing yes, along. Yes, we love that. <laughs> Oval, Oval and red. red. Yep. Red. All right. So in 1900, they were short, bare, and buffed. Yep. So they. Bonnie says the short, buffed, pink. <laughs> uh, perfect, Bonnie. And then in 1910, rounded and almond. 1920, round. 1930, oval. 1940, oval and almond. The red came in in the 1920s, and the half moon was big in the 1930s and 40s. So those of you that guessed red were only off by 20 years. Well, it never went away. It just wasn't the most popular. Right. And I wanted to make a side note about the half moon manicure. There's a, there's a television show that I, that I like to watch sometimes. And no, it's not supernatural. We won't get into that one. It's called Timeless. And this television show, they have a time machine and they travel to different decades. Okay, so it's sci-fi. That's where my heart is. And one of the episodes, they were in the 1940s. And they try and get their clothing just right. And I noticed the actress, the lead actress, had the half moon manicure. Wow. And I was like, I'm impressed. They even got the nails right. Yes. And once again, my husband's like, that's what you notice? Well, yes. Of course. That's what, else what is I there noticed. To see? The Oscars, the Met Gala, the, the nails. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you see some of the nails from the Met Gala? Oh, yes. Oh, I saw oh, some yes. that Gina had done, Gina Silvestro, and some that Tom Baychak had done. Mm -hmm. They were beautiful. The outfits were cool, but the nails, right? Like, that's the what nails really what we tuned in. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's get to the 1960s. And this is the first time I'm seeing kind of what some of my clients think is a word that I made up for a shape. So how many of you can guess what the most popular shape was in the 1960s? Some of your clients probably think it's a made-up word as well. <laughs> I know when I say it, my clients are going to be like, did you make that up? No, like, it really no, isn't the theory book. It's an actual shape. Right in there with square and round. It's... Right? No guesses? So pinks were the color. What would you Yay! guess? Yay! Jennifer! Nice. <laughs> it is squoval. <laughs> totally. Yep, Michelle got it too. Thank you, Michelle. Give us a thumbs up if your clients think you made that <laughs> word up, because we would love to know if we're the only ones that our clients think we're crazy, or if that's pretty well square bow. I like I like roses too. It's square bow. Oh, I've not seen I've, it. Done I haven't that heard that way. one before. Well, I have nice. to remember. Kind of type fast enough. I, Denise, we'll give, we'll give you credit that you that you knew what you were talking about there. Right. <laughs> awesome. In the 1970s, it was square, French was popular, and now sparkly is starting to get popular. So yay for the 70s coming along and giving us sparkles. I don't know what I would do without my sparkles. No glitter? Right? Like, huh, glitter makes me so happy. 1980s, square, this is where your neons came in and your bold colors. Okay, that's my so, era. Right? The 80s. Like, totally coming in with those squares and those bolds. And I always think of splatter paint when it comes to the 80s. Oh, yes. So, like, just all those really vibrant, bold neon colors with splatter paint. In the 1990s, we're back to round and dark and black are big. But that really was kind of the grunge era. I was going to say, make so you think grunge. So, we were starting to see, yes. yeah, we were starting to see that, that those darker colors become a thing. And nowadays, like, it used to be if you had black polish on, people would be like, ugh, do you worship the devil? Are you goth? When my daughter and, was in junior high, mm -hmm. she came home and she was upset one day because she liked to polish her nails black and white, mm -hmm. and it'd typically be like every other. And she was upset because the school counselor had called her aside and said, just wanted to make sure you're okay, and good on for the counselor for being eyes on. But Shelby was offended that they thought she was all emo, that was the word at the time, Right. with emo because she was wearing black nails. Like, I appreciate her concern, but... Call her, call me, and we'll talk about black nails. <laughs> yes, because now it's a very chic trend. Exactly. It's definitely, the connotation for black nails has definitely changed since the 90s. Yes, thank goodness. In the 2000s, the biggest shape was round, and then French, and what is that word? I can't read your hand. Oh, good, you can't read your Oh, French is back. <laughs> oh, French is back. <laughs> Can't so the notes. French manicure <laughs> came back in 2000. <laughs> so we noticed kind of a resurgence of that French manicure look with enhancements before the gel polishes made their big debut. Yes. And then when we get to the 2010 era, 
What do you think have been some of the most popular shapes this decade that we're currently living? We'll give you a couple minutes to kind of type in your ideas. Michelle says she avoids the word. Which yes. word is she avoiding? I'm, I'm guessing is she avoids. <laughs> <laughs> and Denise says she's not, she likes to say sporty. Oh, sporty square is a good with, way to yes, say it. Square with rounded corners. Nice. Stiletto. Oh, Denise stiletto. is on it today. She is. <laughs> Almonds. Nice. Stiletto. Another vote for stiletto. Ballerina stiletto. Another good vote. Yep. Coffin. Coffin. Yep. Well, you guys have totally nailed it. I've been waiting the whole broadcast to say that. <laughs> so, pointed stiletto and coffin have been the most popular. However, all of those shapes, there have definitely been a lot of classes just on shaping because of the structure and design yes. of some of the shapes that well, yes. our modern day clients are doing. They're, they're a bit of a challenge if you want them to have strength and length at the same time. Yes, and I think maybe we could include a little bit of structure in a broadcast. If we did anatomy, we could do anatomy with some structure. Okay. So definitely let us know in the comments if you'd like to see an, 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 eh, an anatomy and structure Facebook Live. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, can I tell them this? All right. So, <laughs> what was the game changer in the 2000s? Let us know. Game changing products. Woof, woof. What are they? We, we talked about wraps. We talked about acrylics. We've talked about forms. Talked about gel and tools. Yep. So, what's our game changer polish in that decade of the 2000s? Yes, what is the, what is the product? Shellac and... There's two things. Shellac is one of them. Gel polish? Gel polish would be the category that you could technically consider shellac. So what goes hand in hands with gel polish and shellac? What was maybe a little bit before shellac? There we go. I think Christy just, and Carolyn yes. pretty much have it. Soft gel. So gel polish and soft gel are coming into play. Yes. Yay! <laughs> I like the interactive question. <laughs> So gels, hard gels, because as we know, there are soft gels and hard gels. Hard gels started to make their appearance in the 80s in the U.S., but they had limited limited success. Um, hard gels, as we know, so those will not soak off. That's kind of what classifies as a hard gel, like original Brisa does not soak off. Um, a soft gel is a, is a gel that can be soaked and, and removed. Hard gels need to be filed, but... They didn't. They weren't really popular in the '80s yet because the the gel manufacturers and the light manufacturers hadn't joined forces to get that right balance of UV exposure, photo initiators, all those all when, those details. When gels started to become a thing, when they resurged again in the 2000s, mm -hmm. I remember the biggest complaint from nail professionals to an educator is, but they always crack and they always get yellow and. So as a new gel user, that was very fascinating to me to hear about what the initial type of gel issues were. And what country did you just tell me gels were? Uh, I believe, it's my understanding, that gels actually originated in Germany. That's because in all of the research that I did, I could not nail down a specific place, time, or manufacturer where it got shifted from the liquid and powder acrylic to gel. I couldn't get that narrowed down. 80s is the first mentions I could start finding of that and no specifics to to company or manufacturer. And maybe that's because I'm not accessing German websites. I don't, I don't <laughs> right. know. <laughs> and fun fact for you, a lot of times you will hear Mel and I talk about liquid and powder and then we'll clarify we're talking about acrylic. If you get into the science of nail products, then a liquid and powder product and a gel product actually mm -hmm. both fall under the acrylic chemical family. So technically when you say acrylic, you could be talking about either one. So if you differentiate it from liquid and powder to gel, it's more clear which one you're talking about. All right, because we have monomers, polymers that mix together and polymerize, and then there's the O word. A ligamer! <laughs> I love that word. It like ranks up there with plethora and tertiary. Plethora and tertiary. All right. 
So the first soft gel that I was able to find that would be something you would be familiar with was Axiom. Nice. OPI came out with Axiom. Um, they were, it was exciting because you could have this hard, a, a hardener, a strengthener to your nail beyond just the polish, and it was the same colors as OPI's Pad Popular colors had been for years. I remember buying a pot of it, and my first one was I'm Not Really a Waitress Red. Naturally. <laughs> That's so funny since we were just discussing that. Yes. And then in 2010, it was Sandy's Shellac. And the, the, the whole industry just exploded from there on out in our, in our very, very, very big category of gel polishes. Absolutely. And we've got Alyssa that just popped in and Christy. Hi, ladies. Thanks for joining. And just so everyone knows, if you didn't make it in right at the beginning, the broadcast will be saved and it will appear on YouTube. Excellent. All right. So that about wraps us up. That kind of, kind of brings us to pretty much current. Like I said, don't even get us started on nail art. That was a whole other other timeline. I think we had enough requests for that in the comments. We should definitely put it on the to-do list. Okay, I'll research. I'm good with that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then we're going to have another broadcast on feet I, coming up. Okay, well, I have, one, you thing, oh, yours, I have okay. one thing left to add for our, for our nail polish or in our nail um, industry or history. As mentioned, when we talked about shoes in the first broadcast, I thought it was interesting to find out the most expensive shoes. Yes. So, the most expensive nail polish, it was called Black Diamond. It's by, it was created by As a Chewer. Um, and it, each bottle claimed it had the equivalence of 267 carats of Black Diamonds in it. And a bottle cost $250,000. Wow. Sounds like that was for celebrity. I believe Rihanna and, and Beyonce may have been mentioned in the article that I was that reading. That wouldn't surprise me at <laughs> yes. all. Yes. Like, I think Pink probably needed one, and maybe Lady Gaga might have needed one. Right. Like, I can almost tick off celebrities in my head that probably like, should have one. Yes. Right. Yes. They did make a consumer-friendly version oh. that claimed to have, like, one, one black black diamond, diamond in the bottle. <laughs> I don't know that I would want to open the bottle. I'd be like, there's a black diamond in here and just like keep the, keep it it's in like the bottle. It's like my, my Louboutin polishes. They just sit yes. there and look pretty. Yes. <laughs> it, it's like, this is just so that I can say that I own it. Yes. yes exactly. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Foot. Feet. All right. So talking about feet, if you want to quick make note, and we can always type in the comments so that you have it as well, um, footforwardsummit.com. This is a brand new event put on by Nails Magazine. It's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia this coming August. And, and if any of you are like me, you're going, <laughs> did you just say Atlanta, Atlanta in, in August? Because <laughs> I was like, whoo, hot Atlanta. <laughs> when, when we were in, in uh, L.A. last month, I talked to Vicki Sutton in, in, from Atlanta, and I'm like, so, what's it like in Atlanta in August? She's like, hot. <laughs> right. Okay. So just to reassure you, there is a venue which is also a hotel. So if you stay at the venue hotel, you would not have to go outside other than to get from the airport to the hotel. Okay. Unless you decide to do some tourism. And then also, in addition to that, their timing for August was kind of thinking you should be winding down on your super busy pedicure season. And it's hitting you right before your super busy holiday season. So they were trying to kind of coordinate an ideal time for your nail professional schedule. And then in addition to that, they were also thinking along the lines of Atlanta is a hub. And so a okay. lot of airports fly right into Atlanta. And a, a quick tip for those of you that are not frequent flyers, um, if you're like me and you have like a smaller airport, mine is Des Moines, and so very rarely do I get a direct flight out unless I pay double or triple for the ticket. However, <coughs> Atlanta is frequently a layover. So you may find a cheaper flight if you book it somewhere near there and your layover is in Atlanta and you can just get off in Atlanta. <laughs> but if you do that, you need to make sure you only have a carry-on luggage because your luggage, your luggage will is continue. Gonna go, yes, so it's going to go on that's vacation in Florida. Possibly <laughs> a money-saving tip if you can carry on. And another tip is, because Atlanta is a huge city and a hub, you can bring priority mail post office boxes and you can ship additional things home instead of trying to carry them on the plane. 
so that also ends up because the largest priority box is like 18 or 19 dollars i forget it's somewhere in there which is cheaper than a 25 to 35 dollar suitcase um mention the name again please oh it's footforwardsummit.com and I'll actually drop it into the comments right now so that you guys can just click on it instead of remembering to write it down. Alright, so the link is now in the comments so that you can just click right on it. I expect you to try using that tip, Sig, and let me know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> And do you guys have any questions for us today before we sign out and leave you for another month? If you have not seen, if you scroll a little further down the Nails Magazine page or if you just pop onto the Fingernail Fixer blog, we do have a recap up from last month's Reflexology Facebook Live. And so it's got some of the photos that you asked <laughs> for as well as some links and reference and resource information for you so that you can further look into reflexology. And there was also a gal that commented, did you have a chance to pop onto that on the nails page yet? There's a gal that commented that she actually was able to find a course on further reflexology oh. at a college. Oh, cool. And so that would definitely be another way if you wanna pop on and read her comment with some further information also on getting into reflexology because okay. it was a really great comment. And we have agreed she only got me to commit to Facebook Lives through June, but this has been so much fun. I've committed to the rest of the year. Boom. So, yay, we're <laughs> going to have a monthly Facebook Live for the rest of the year. Keep an eye out on the blog. I could get it done this week. We can compare dates today. Keep an eye out on the blog this week for the future dates for the rest of the year so you can pencil it in <coughs> your schedule. Potentially, we will be looking to keep up our second Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m., um, Eastern Time or Central. Central. <laughs> Don't mess with up. <laughs> so 11 it's 11 a.m. Central. Central. It's 12 noon on the East Coast. It's 10 a.m. in Mountain Time. It's 9 a.m. California Time. And it's 5 p.m. in London. There you go. Australia and New Zealand, it's like way, way in the middle of the night. So they have, have to, to catch hopefully the catch the repeat. Yes. Because we do love to get all of our nail professionals around the world. The time zones just don't always cooperate. Um, Karen says it's 4.40 a.m. Oh, my goodness. I'm <laughs> so <laughs> thankful that you got up to watch at 4 in the morning. Thank maybe, you for joining us. And maybe she was I up with a child. New Zealand. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I believe she's New Zealand. Goodness. Awesome. Good on you. No kidding. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Just out of curiosity, where is everyone from? Just pop your... Well, no, Location we have, in the comments. We have LA. No, we have yep, Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Marion's in the UK currently. Do you guys know we are in Iowa? Yeah. Did you know that's where we broadcast <laughs> from? <laughs> the Tips of the Trade studio in Altoona, Iowa. Yeah. With all the awesome nail goodies. Like your nail eyes can just go bananas in this room. When we first did this, I asked Holly, I'm like, you sure that's not too distracting? She's like, yes, but it's fabulous. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, Maryland, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, New York, Florida, New Mexico. I look at NM and think, California. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I know Bonnie's in New Mexico. She's like, never mind. You don't need to. Oh, look, another Iowa person. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Cool. We'll continue to leave your locations. We'd love to see them in the comments. And, and, then, and Ackley, there's another oh, Iowa. Oh, nice. <sighs> I feel so that our Iowa people joined us. Yes, they do. Wow. Someone from where I live, way down the boonies. Nice. I bet she's just trying, she knows you're from there and she's just trying to, like, suck up <laughs> to you. No, I'm pretty sure she actually pretty is sure. <laughs> there. Yeah, I've done an in salon class with her. And she was hey. at the Grandmaster classes in Des Moines. Oh. Hi, um, Ashley. Yeah. Yes, I believe I knew that. Brilliant. Idaho, Michigan. There we go. Cool. Well, Bonnie's laughing at me. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Right? So we're going to sign out for this month. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. And we hope you had a great time with us learning about the history of nails. Thank you for all your contributions, comments, and questions. And until next month, nail, nail on. on.